We are gonna start our freezer meal workshop. So uh, we'll just give it a second, see who's joining us, and then we will rock and roll. So basically, um, for those of you that have no idea what's going on, I have uh, done a grocery list and shared that with a ton of consultants and customers and people all over Canada and the US are grabbing their ingredients and joining me here and we're all going to cook together. So they're going to be have me playing live in their kitchen and I'm going to cook in my kitchen and then we're all going to cook together. So for those of you that are watching us, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. And if you're watching the replay, please shout out replay and where you're watching from. And of course, if you're cooking with us today, make sure you share that as well. I know there's a number of people wanting the replay because they were busy. And though I can't wait to see who's actually cooking with us. So the first thing that I'm going to cook and I'm not seeing any comments yet. So just if, if somebody could just comment, just like, Oh, I see that somebody's watching. If somebody could just comment so that I know that the comments are working because I don't want there to be questions there um, that people are asking that I can't see. So anybody watching that wants to share a comment so I can see that it's working, that would be super helpful. Thank you, Sandra. Awesome. Okay, so I know the comments are working. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is I've got my containers. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Jess. Um, thanks, Jenny. Okay, so I've got my containers. I get these at Costco. There's like 25 containers. Now they're not a super thick plastic, right? So if these are gonna bang around in the freezer, Hey, Cynthia, these will break if you bang around with them. Okay, so I use them though, and I usually just put two together. Um, if there's a lot in my freezer, or if I'm stacking it in the bottom of my fridge freezer, that I just put one and I don't worry about it. Now, another thing that I often use are these. Um, I got these on, on Amazon. These are my silicone bags, and that just slides on, and those can go in the freezer. Of course, there's Ziploc bags or whatever you're using. Um, Hi Jackie, I like to make sure I'm using something. Now what I love about these, here's the coolest thing. Just a minute. Okay, so if you freeze your food in these, it fits right in. So as it thaws a little bit, you can just basically whack your frozen chunk of chicken or whatever out into your steamer and then throw it right into the microwave if you want to either cook it through or um, for, I wouldn't cook everything in the microwave, right? But if you wanted to cook your chicken through or whatever, or you can just thaw it, right? So that's the benefit of a container like this is that I can just pop it right into my steamer for thawing because I don't often remember to thaw something the day before. That's pretty classic. So, um, now we've got your containers. I'm writing right on the top of my containers. Okay, so I this is a long term container for my kitchen. You can see that the, the names start to fade. I cannot stand when you know the frost rubs off the writing and you can't read it anymore, or the piece of tape that you had falls off. That's just ridiculous and it's super annoying. Um, so write it right on it. And by the time you get to the bottom of your container, the top ones will fade and then you can just keep going right over top. So that's what I do. All right, so I've got my containers. Now, I don't wanna dirty a bunch of bowls because I'm all about sort of put the least amount of work possible, less dishes, etc. So the first recipe, hopefully you all have your recipes. These sheets were posted in the event. There is a recipe difference for the USA. Um, I'm gonna be making Korean barbecue ribs and the USA has got um, the stampede barbecue ribs. Pretty much similar process, just different ingredients in your recipe will have that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my Cabo's lime chicken. So I'm using two of the ingredients from our good Mexican set. So in my Cabo's lime chicken, I am using guacamole. Look how full that is, oh my gosh. Okay, so it makes the best guacamole, but it is amazing seasoning. I use it for so many things, and it is going to be the seasoning on our chicken today. Um, it is, oh, like just go Google guacamole and Epicure, you're gonna get so many ideas. But this is amazing in tuna, if you haven't tried that. It is just an all round delicious seasoning anytime you need a bunch of flavor. Okay, the other thing we're using out of that is our poco picante salsa. Now, this is, 
medium in Mexican scale. So it's going to be a little bit spicy. If you're not um, good with some heat, I might recommend in Canada the pico um, or just put half as much. Okay, because yay, Melinda, you're cooking. That's awesome. Uh, so I'm excited that Melinda's cooking and I didn't, I, there might have been more, but I missed them. Okay, so your poco salsa is an option. Just put a little bit less if you don't want it too spicy. Okay, so the other things in the Good Mexican Collection, which is one of our most popular cooking classes, is nacho cheese. Um, I love this one in my rice. Delicious rice seasoning. And of course it makes, um, I just heard Jenny today say she puts it on popcorn, so try that, haven't done that yet. Another thing in there is fajita. This is my daughter's everything spice. So if you don't have the Mexican collection yet, grab it. It is fantastic. Um, great cooking class as well. But fajita is her everything. So whenever she plays home chef, especially when she's like 12 and 13, she's now 18 almost, she would grab the fajita as her seasoning for everything. It was so cute. Okay, now Cabo's Lime Chicken. We're going to grab a lime, whoops, a lime. We're gonna grow, actually we're gonna grab two limes. Hello, Montreal! I'm Marie France. I'm gonna roll my limes because I'm gonna get more juice out of them. Now, I took my limes out a while ago. If I know I'm gonna use lemons and limes, I don't wanna have them right in the fridge right up to the last minute because I'm not gonna get as much juice out of them and then I'm not, um, I'm not really wasting money, right? So, I've rolled my limes. This is a perfect use for my little ceramic knife. Give my limes a slice. These are a bit soft. They've been in my fridge a while because I buy the giant bag from Costco and I end up having to wait till you sell all that up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ingredients right into my container, okay? I'm going to use, I'm going to be sharing this with my son who can't uh, handle any heat. So I'm going to use one teaspoon of the poco, right? Just right in there. I'm going to use a tablespoon of my guacamole. Now, I'm measuring for your sake. This is the only one I'm going to measure because I don't measure as a general rule. I do this, you know, I do this every couple of weeks. I buy all my proteins at once. I did my $80 Costco shop. It's all going in my freezer and I'm going to eat for probably two months out of what I'm putting in the freezer today. Okay, so I've got my guacamole and my poco in there. I'm just going to squeeze in my limes. So I need approximately three tablespoons of juice it's gonna be fine, right? Whatever amount I get, it's still gonna be good. So I'm gonna do, I will do a lime and a half. These are getting some good juice, but check this out, okay? If you don't have the citrus press yet, look what that did. It basically inverted it, squeezed all the juice out of there and also squeezed the oils out of the skin. So I'm getting those beneficial, healthy oils as well as the juice, right? This thing is the bomb. So of course the green goes in and if you didn't specifically notice what I was doing there, I am putting it upside down. It seems like it should go that way, right? That seems common sensible. It's not that way. So you put it in the other way, you're gonna get more juice. Um, the other thing is when you put it this way and you squeeze, you basically squeeze the juice into your face. That's never fun. So if you put it that way, you're covering all the holes on the bottom, the juice is going to squirt downwards rather than at you. Okay, so I'm gonna go with one and a half limes. And then we're going to put some olive oil. I'm just gonna kind of go like this. I keep my olive oil in a squirter so it's super easy to use. I'm just gonna put, you know, sort of that amount. Um, the chicken have a nice amount of fat to them so I don't need to add as much fat as I might say for a tenderloin that doesn't have anything. Now. This is mixed, that was easy. Um, we're not dirtying anything else. And now I'm just going to put my chicken in there. And of course, I'm gonna end up having to wash my hands. So I'm gonna use tongs. Normally, if I wasn't doing a video, I would just be doing the chicken right in. Now, I haven't taken all the extra skin off this chicken. I would before I cook it. I would be cutting all this thick skin off. I would be cutting all that other skin, like the fatty bits off before I cook it. Um, but I'm actually gonna leave it in there as it's in the freezer. Well, now I got my hands dirty. <laughs> See, I don't usually use tongs. All right, so I'm just gonna leave that skin on there in the freezer because it's gonna protect the chicken more. Um, I'm actually gonna turn that one over because I want the skin, if anything's gonna get sort of freezer action on the outsides, it's gonna be the skin and it's gonna probably be the chunks of skin that I cook off, that cut off if I need to. So, <clears throat> now, 
I'm doing thighs, as you can see. Those are not breasts, thighs are cheaper. And you know, I know most people enjoy breasts. I did a little bit of a survey, uh, but I'm not. So I'm doing thighs. So I'm gonna put about six thighs in to equal four chicken breasts. And that's pretty much done, right? All I'm gonna do is throw a lid on it, throw it in the freezer. That's what I do. Hang on, I'm gonna wash my hands. So there we go. The first container is ready for the freezer. I'm just gonna throw the lid onto that. And then I'm just gonna give it a little shake around so I can make sure that the seasoning gets on everything and it's going to marinate as it cooks. It's going to, oh, sorry, it's gonna marinate as it freezes. It's gonna marinate as it thaws. And when I come back and grab this out of the freezer in three or four weeks, um, basically it's going to be done, ready to eat. So I can take it out in the morning if I forget. Um, I can throw it right into my steamer and thaw it, right, if I forget. Okay, so capitalist lime chicken is done. So whoever's cooking with me, I'm gonna give you a second while I talk about the next thing, because I don't wanna leave you behind. So, <clears throat> anybody have any questions? Oh, you like my green walls? Yeah, it's called asparagus, it's a bare paint. Um, when I bought this house, I ripped the kitchen out of it and redid it. So the house originally, yeah, right? So easy, Karen, yay. The house originally um, had a kitchen that was in a really big space, but it had about six feet of counter space. I'm like, who designs a kitchen like that in a massive space? So my new kitchen is got about 32 feet of counter space in approximately the same amount of space. Yeah, and I don't, you know what? I have 54 drawers. As crazy as that sounds, this is the kitchen that Epicure built. So my entire kitchen is drawers. I have no bottom cupboards except under the sink. Um, and everything is drawers and everything is tucked away because I've got so much room and such a big kitchen, I can put it all away. And it's an Ikea kitchen, so it's not like super duper expensive because, you know, that's my budget, You're right? I'd rather spend money on an Ikea kitchen than solid wood kitchen and spend more money traveling and enjoying. So that's how I choose to spend. Uh, the chicken sounds delicious. Okay, so tonight we're going to have some of that chicken. I've got fresh corn on the cob from my garden that I'm going to serve with it. Um, and then I'm going to roast some baby potatoes. So I've got all this on the counter because the kids are coming over to take all of the extra containers of food with them. And then we're gonna cook some for dinner tonight. So that's what I'm gonna have with the chicken and then a big bunch of greens from the garden, right? So uh, yeah, this is Ikea. Don't buy this one though. This one, this dark one, really hard to keep clean. There are some bit fantastic, but don't buy that one. Don't buy that one. Okay, we're gonna go on to our next recipe. Hopefully everybody has caught up. The next one that I am going to do, let me just scan through here. Oh, Donair lemon chicken. Oh my gosh. This is one of my favorite recipes. Um, in the US, this would be gyro. This, I probably go through two packages of this. Well, maybe three packages a month and I don't eat the same thing over and over, but I go through a three pack of this a month. I have it with the lemon chicken. I have put it in my, um, like almost made a hummus with my chickpeas with the Donair. It's amazing just in my ground beef. Um, out of Donair. Well, if you've got any of the old roasted garlic hummus, that would be really good. Um, there's probably a lot of things in your kitchen. I mean, anything with lemon and olive oil is really gonna taste delicious. So I think you could pretty much go with any lemon, any seasoning you've got and you're gonna get deliciousness. This one is just not gonna be quite as Mediterranean. Um, so if you don't have the Donair slash Euro yet, you must get it because it is absolutely so versatile. And I don't know that I've ever done the recipe on the back of the package. Um, I don't do the cook and the long and the slow. I usually just make it into patties or donor kebabs on a, on a stick and grill it up. So, okay, I'm gonna get that open. So this is going to do a lot of chicken thighs. Uh, we only need a half of the package, okay? So I could measure that or, whoopsie, I put too much. I could do that. And then look, I think I have approximately a half a package. Um, and I'm actually gonna do this in two containers because I wanna give one to each of my boys. So I'm gonna probably do about that. So that looks good. So there we've got our Donair seasoning. 
uh, we've got some olive oil. Okay, so we're just gonna squirt in some olive oil and then I'm gonna put in a lemon. I haven't rolled my lemons yet, but they have been out of the fridge, as I said, because it makes your lemons so much easier. Oh, this one's so, got so much lovely oils that's sliding around. Mm, makes me happy. Okay, so we are going to use the juice of a lemon. So I'll put half the lemon in each. Okay, so I'm putting the yellow, of course, again, flesh side down in the yellow side. So I'm not gonna use quite all of this one in one side because I didn't cut them easily. So I'm gonna use the rest of it over there. Ooh, and it squeezed out some pulp. That's gonna give it some extra flavor. <laughs> yeah, we, we measure the same way, Tracy. I love it. What's measuring? You know, if I'm baking, then I kind of have to measure, but if I'm not baking, I don't care. And I know it's gonna be delicious. So that is my Donair lemon chicken. I'm gonna give that a little swirl. Now, if it's so thick that I don't think it will coat the um, ingredients that I'm putting in, when that happens, I just add a little bit of water, right? I could add more oil, that's delicious too. Um, I could add more lemon, but really water's cheap and I'm just gonna add that. I'm just attempting to give the seasonings basically enough liquidity to cover all of my meat. Okay, so I'm gonna use multiple donair packages today because I'm going to do it on the pork, I'm gonna do it on the, on the uh, um, chicken, I'm gonna do a few things. Okay, so here we go again. I'm going to do these for my boys. I'm gonna put three, four breasts per. And you know, I don't eat these ones, so that's one of the other reasons I don't clean all that stuff up. You know what, they gotta clean their own stuff off the chicken. I'm gonna make them some chicken, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not gonna do everything for them. So, okay. We have got um, the Mediterranean or Donair or Euro chicken ready to go. I'm just gonna put the lids on. I'm gonna wash my hands, put the lids on, give it a shake, and that one's done. So, while I'm doing that, I would love to know all of you, where are, what are you using your Donair for? Uh, your guacamole, all the seasonings we've talked about so far, what are you using them for? Get the conversation going, folks. Yes, Marie France, I get these from Costco. There are 25 of them. I think it's like 10 or $11, I'm not sure. Uh, so, lid on before I put my hands on it and start shaking it. I am going to label it. I could totally use Ziploc bags. Uh, the main reason I don't use Ziploc bags is just because I have the freezer space that I don't, um, and I don't, you know, then I'm not gonna wash them and reuse them. I have used these as well, so I will use this for some of my stuff. Um, I often put my chilies and stuff in these uh, bags, okay? So that's the main reason. If I had a limited space, I would totally use bags because it's more flexible, uh, but I've got a big enough freezer that I can just stack these. Okay, so I don't see you sharing your ideas. Oh wait, oh, I saw Donair meatballs, Donair burgers, turkey meatballs, yum. So I can just send my boys home with the, uh, with the um, recipe sheets. I got the bags on Amazon. I love my Amazon, I, you know, I won't wanna shop on Amazon, really. I, it's not my ideal place to shop at all. So if you know a better place, let me know. Uh, but I got those on Amazon and I've got my silicone uh, other ones. Hang on, let me show you. <clears throat> so I have these ones as well. So I have tons of these. I haven't bought Ziploc in like probably six months and I don't plan to again. So these are fantastic. Um, I use these for all of my things, like my cheese go in these. Things don't spoil nearly as fast in these as they do in Ziploc. I don't understand how come, uh, but they work so much better. And they're only like, I don't know, $8 for six of them or something. It's not expensive at all. And most of the time when my camera stand is not um, actually holding my camera, I have these drawing on top of it. So it's a handy little thing for that too. Uh, guacamole seasoning, soup, salads, pasta, yes! Okay, I love this, Sharon, keep going, guys. Okay, right. so in order to get my seasoning on everything, that's all I'm gonna do. Give it a little shake, flavors everywhere. <clears throat> now this is the one that when it's cooking, I wanna cook it 
I want to get the top crispy, but that like dripping stuff that falls off, you want to make sure you've got your silicone um, bacon roll in that baking dish when you fry, when you put it in your oven. And I'm going to do mine in my oven until it gets like sort of crispy and delicious. Uh, but I want to have my bacon roll because there's all that delicious stuff that drips off. And you want to save that and pour it back on your chicken. Mm -hmm. Yes, can't waste any of that delicious drippings of this when it cooks. The bacon roll catches it all, so you get to eat it. Okay, so those are done. All right, so let's do our steak next. Love all this guacamole use. You guys are awesome. Okay, so steak. Let's go on to that. Now, I'm going to do mine um, as steak... Uh, strips because I usually use most of my steak for tacos it's not I buy sirloin so it's not the best quality steak for just grilling a steak but it's a great inexpensive way to get a good boost of iron um, so uh, although you know what lentils are super high in iron I've discovered and I'm loving those I anyway, for my steak I'm going to cut it up now it's not frozen but I love this new ceramic knife for cutting my steak so it I can cut reasonably short thin quick pieces that are going to be like super duper tender with the flavoring on them, okay? So that's basically what I'm gonna do with my ceramic. This happens to be two pounds of steak. Um, I measured exactly because really I want my recipes to be pretty good food, real results friendly. So I use my scale, I have right here. Um, I put the plate on the scale. So if you're not familiar with using a scale for this, put whatever your thing is, right? Your dish, your plate, on your scale, zero your scale. So I'm gonna turn my scale on, set it to zero. So it is now zeroed, including the weight of the dish. And then I would just pile in my, you know, enough steak till I hit two pounds. And then I know that I have eight perfect portions. Okay, so that's how I would make sure I'm preparing my food to be good food roll results balanced. Now I'm not gonna cut all of this steak in front of you because that's gonna to take too long. So we're just going to throw our seasoning on our steak and then I will cut the rest after um, and take care of it then. Okay, so in our ultimate Asian steak, which is gonna be the most amazing tacos, I'm going to put two tablespoons of sesame ginger. Now I'm gonna put, yeah, I'm gonna put one whole batch of steak and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make steak in a couple different flavors. So I'm gonna go with, a, you know, kind of that much, one to two tablespoons-ish, juice of a lime, Deviled eggs, guacamole, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yes, that is a must. Okay, there's a half a lime. I'm gonna go with another lime. And you know what, limes stay ridiculously well in um, the mesh bags, grocery bags. My limes and lovins that I get from Costco now are lasting me at least twice as long. So if you don't have these yet, let me show you because they're life-changing. Just wash my hands again. So when I'm not doing this with a group, I would actually um, have my containers that are all my seasonings in all the containers and all the lids with it. But of course you can't see that, so I didn't do that today. But I would have all my containers and all my seasonings done. And then I would just walk through and put all of my chicken in at once. And then wash my hands and all of my beef in at once. And it's like an assembly line and it's super fast and efficient and I'm not constantly washing. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put in a little bit of soy sauce. Now I am using uh, Bragg's because it's gluten-free. So I'm gonna go in with about one, two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm gonna go in with some olive oil to keep this nice and moist. Okay, so basically I am now ready with my steak tacos and I can add the rest of my steak once I have it all sliced up. And of course I would shake it if I had the lid to shake it with and steak tacos are ready to go. And then I'm just gonna Fry it up, and I love my tacos with broccoli slaw. If you buy slaw, go for the broccoli slaw. I don't buy regular coleslaw anymore. Hey, Angela, I don't buy regular coleslaw anymore because I can make that so cheap on my mandolin, but as for broccoli slaw, that's the one I buy, and it's this amazing crunch in your tacos, so totally try that. Okay, so that's my steak ready to roll. I can finish that in a few minutes. Okay, what else are we doing? Okay, the pork. Now, here's the thing. There's two different porks going on here today. Let's do the, I'm gonna do the uh, pork tenderloin first. You get four tenderloins 
from Costco. As a general rule, each one is about um, a serving for four people. So I usually just run with that. I figure it's close enough. So that's what we're going to do. Hang on. Where's my, where's my dish brush? Okay, so I'm going to get this package open. Now, if you haven't done this step, it is really important that you take this off. That's the silver skin. I gave you the link about taking it off the ribs. Hang on, I'm missing my sharp little ceramic knife. Let me just find it. All right, so I want my little tight point that can get just under that silver skin beautifully and then I'm not wasting a lot of meat. You see how that just skins right off. I mean, you just gotta remove this because this stuff is not edible. I mean, it might be edible, but it's a lot of work. So don't, don't be eating this stuff. This is always needs to be cleaned off of your pork roast. And I didn't do this one so that you could see it. Um, I did pork at a cooking class recently and nobody in the class knew that this should be removed. So they would be eating a piece of pork and it would be really chewy and they would wonder what's wrong with their pork. Now I'm gonna just drop mine like that because I have dogs here and they're well trained and they catch it on the way down and then they run away with it and eat it. So I have my little 15 pound puppies, jiggle babies. Uh, so that's what I do with my vegetables. That's what I do with my bits of meat. Um, if it was just fat, I would not give it to them. Um, I mean, they probably are fine with that, but I don't wanna give them something like that, but they love this with the bits of stuff. So there, my pork is cleaned and ready to go. Okay, now, you can do them in any way. A lot of people love it. Just, just like cook it as a one whole roast. Uh, usually I don't want to have to have my oven on for longer and I'm kind of wanting to eat like now when I eat. So I'm going to cut mine into coins and then I'm going to just quickly pan sear those. And that's what I'm going to do with mine. So you do whatever you want to do with yours. Um, yeah, I just want to sort of have dinner ready the fastest way possible. I'm going to switch to my larger knife. It's going to be much more efficient. So I'm doing them like these are going to be a quick, like couple, like a minute on each side. So that's the sort of uh, speed I like when I'm cooking. Basically, I can start my rice in my steamer. My rice is going to take me 10 minutes. Um, by the time my rice is done, I can have all of my thin little... Uh, coins pan seared and we are pretty much ready to eat kind of right now because I took it out of the freezer pre-marinated right so that's the benefit of doing this pre-marinating you don't really have any real work to do the day of except cooking um, I'm the person who if I really like oh yeah so I do this because I tried that whole you know planning three days ahead and pre-marinating three days ahead and it just didn't happen oops I missed a little bit of this stuff Get that off of there. There you go. So I this method of cooking works for somebody who's sort of last minute going, oh crap, what's for dinner? Um, so that's sort of my life. I'm usually in the garden or doing something fun and interesting right up until the point that I realize I need to eat. Um, so I love doing this as well with the family pack still because it allows me to sell, send a bunch with my boys um, who of course get Throw their freezers full. Okay, so there's my tenderloin. I'm not going to put it on there because I don't want the bottom to get all gross. I'm going to wash my hands again. So I'd love to hear what do you put on your pork tenderloin? If anybody eats pork tenderloin, what is your favorite seasoning on it? Let's get some ideas going. Sandra, broccoli slaw, yes, yes. Hey, Claudia, hi, Kim. Okay, my pork tenderloin. We are going to do souvlaki on this. So that's this delicious little seasoning. Ooh, oh, Canada, mm, yes. Oh, Canada's good at anything. Um, okay, souvlaki. I've got not much left in here, so I'm just gonna do that until it looks like it's maybe a teaspoon, a tablespoon. Um, okay. I'm going to do my olive oil. So hopefully if I'm going to, then I'm just going to give a little pause and let our, uh, our people that are cooking to catch up with us. And then I'm going to do another lemon. So this pork can take a lot of lemon. So I'm going to go in with the whole lemon. 
Yeah, and I can use this knife because it's only going to be used for my pork. And then I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to get rid of that one. Okay. There we go. Ooh, this is a super juicy lemon. I might not need the whole thing. Okay, so there's my lemon. Let's get rid of this. Now, I'm gonna get rid of my some of my used up citrus here. I'm not putting it in my compost. Y'all know I'm like a crazy serious gardener. Uh, worms don't like lemons and limes. Don't put your citrus in your compost because that can actually keep some of the earthworms out of your compost. So, I'm actually just gonna put those in there and let them do their thing in the garbage. Okay. So we're pretty much done. I think I added everything, right? I did too lucky. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, gosh, that was easy, right? Okay. So done. So you can see how in an hour when, when you're not stopping and talking and you just kind of set yourself up an assembly line of seasonings and lemons and limes, you can blow through $80 worth of, you know, four giant family packs of meats in an hour into your freezer. Okay, so this is a little bit of osublaki pork. Okay, done. Ready to go, right? More to go, just gotta give it my little shake, make sure I get that flavoring everywhere. Maybe I'm tenderizing it a little bit at the same time. So, of course, Ziploc bags, like Tracy talked about, if you're in a limited space, containers like this, uh, what we talked about earlier for anybody who missed the beginning when I take this out at like six o'clock going oh crap we need to eat tonight when I take that out at six o'clock I can basically pop the whole block of frozen tenderloin right into my steamer right it's the perfect size it fits in there pop it right out of the container into the steamer thaw it and then right onto the grill or onto the frying pan for a quick sear and dinner's done Okay, so the last one we have is our barbecue ribs. I think it's our last one. And then I'm going to mix it up and make other combinations. So start thinking about kind of cool combinations I can make because I'm open to anything I've got in my cupboard. So if you've got some combinations I should try, I will totally do it. Okay, now I want to catch up a little bit and let anybody who's cooking with us catch up. What would you serve? I've just made this souvlaki tenderloin. What are you gonna serve with it, people? You know, Greek salad, classic. What else would you love to have with your souvlaki tenderloin? Let's give everybody some ideas so that when they go to take their dinner out, they've got other ideas than what's already on their recipe sheets. So go, souvlaki tenderloin. What are you gonna eat with it? While I wait for everybody to catch up, I'm actually gonna take my tenderloin knives and my cutting board back out and finish this up because then I'm being super efficient with my time while everybody catches up. So that's what I'm going to do. And of course, thing one and thing two are here very happy. They love when I start cooking. They come from everywhere. That one's kind of long and thick. Okay, Greek salad, steamed asparagus. Mmm. Are you doing potatoes? How are you gonna make it a balanced, good food, real results meal? So I'm gonna have my four ounces by weight if I cared to weigh it. I, I kind of don't, I'm, I've done it long enough now that I can just kind of tell. Um, so you're gonna have your four ounces of your tenderloin. You're going to have your half a cup of some sort of starch. So that might be some squash, um, a winter squash, that might be some rice. There's a big chunk of fat in there that I'm chasing, but it's not a big, uh, it's not a silver skin, so I didn't have to do that, but now I got a chunk cut off, so whatever. You know what, this is like sort of my, um, my level of fine detail. I just wanna make it happen and be done. So the fact that I have this one random big weird piece, who cares, it's gonna cook, it's gonna taste good. Yeah, rice. Rice or quinoa done in rice pilaf. Your rice or quinoa done in 10 to 12 minutes in your steamer. Greek potatoes. Oh yeah, I can't go wrong with some Greek potatoes. There, see, well, that's just fine. So, beautiful. And okay, so finish our good, good food roll results meal. We've got our four ounces of our protein. We have got a half cup of our um, favorite starch of the day that we want to have, right? So whether we're going to have some rice pilaf or some couscous or some quinoa, 
or some yams, right? There's so many options. We're gonna have a half, half a cup of that. Uh, then we're gonna have a bunch of greens. What have you got in your gardens? Oh, vegetables in the oven. Yeah, some nice root veggies, maybe some carrots. Um, the other day, I have to show you the photo, I did an entire sheet pan, and not a baby sheet pan, like a big sheet pan of um, broccoli, roasted broccoli. Oh my God, if you're not roasting broccoli, it really turns roasted broccoli into like, it's candy. It's just ridiculously good. So roasted broccoli, I ate the entire cookie sheet. I had actually intended to cook it for the family. Um, and then everybody was not in the room. So by the time they come back down, it was gone because it was really good. So roasted broccoli is ridiculous and uh, you can eat an entire, <laughs> entire pan if you're me. Okay, so uh, if you're cooking, if you want to tell us if you've caught up or not, you might have your hands full. You might not be able to let us know. I'll just finish cleaning this one. I'm going to put the other one in the freezer um, and cook it later. I don't know. I don't really want to marinate it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'll probably do something on the grill later. So the last one will go in on its own. And then... I will take the silver skin off after because that silver skin is going to keep it protected for a little while longer. Oh, in Arizona, you don't know what a garden is. Oh, that's so sad. Oh my gosh. But my assistant was just looking through my, my bills and she's like, I don't think you, I think you lost a bunch of your grocery bills for the summer. And I'm like, no, um, they're all there. And she's like, well, there's like, you haven't spent any money. And I'm like, um, I haven't bought produce. I've been eating greens since May out of my own garden and vegetables. I hadn't really bought produce. So it was like, well, that's why my vegetable bill was so low. No, my seed bill on the other hand. But of course I'll cook out of those seeds for years and then collect. Okay, so I'm pretty much done my tenderloin. I'm gonna have multiple containers that I can season. Okay, my last roasted broccoli I put on, I often put on seasoning salt, but I couldn't find it. I found my seasoning salt today out on my yard swing, because of course that's where you keep your seasoning salt. Um, so I can't remember what I was doing. I think I was giving somebody a sample when they were here looking at the garden. So I think it was you, Anna, if you're watching this. Anyway, found my seasoning salt outside today. So I wouldn't have used that. Um, normally I would, but I put on my favorite personal salt blend. I take the herbed garlic salt, and then I add about two teaspoons of chili flakes and garlic to a big bottle of herb garlic salt, or if you're just putting it into your grinder, actually you would be putting it into your grinder. So one grinder of herb garlic salt with a teaspoon of chili flakes and garlic, best salt ever. So that's what I usually put on my broccoli. And the, the best way to get the best broccoli, hang on, let me wash. Okay. Okay. So the best roasted broccoli ever, you want to dial down your salt grinder so that you're almost getting like dust, right? So if you didn't know that your Epicure salt grinders adjust. Okay, so I'm gonna use my sriracha because I don't know where the other one is. So th this little dial here can, ad can adjust and you can make your salt finer or coarser. So I make my salt so it's like dust, salt dust and it makes a really fine dusting over the broccoli and it almost helps crisp it a little bit. And of course I'm putting on oil and I'm massaging oil right into my chunks of broccoli so that it gets nice and crispy. Probably, uh, I don't know, probably about a teaspoon of oil to my cookie sheet. I didn't measure, so I don't know. Um, but then taste your broccoli because if it tastes salty on the broccoli, it's gonna be way too salty when it's done. So it should be like a really mild salty taste on the broccoli, we can just barely taste the salt, and then by the time it's cooked and crispy and it shrinks up, that salt will be intensified. So do not let it be salty when you first put it in, or you might not be able to eat it. Okay, so that's done. I, yeah, I think we cooked everything. No, we didn't finish our ribs. Here we go. Hopefully everybody's caught up. We're going on to ribs. Okay, now I took my ribs and I removed the silver skin, as I mentioned. Now these are not gonna fit in my container. Right, so this is not gonna work. This is where I would need to go to a Ziploc or something larger. You know, in my case, we're just gonna eat these for dinner. So um, I'm just gonna do these in a bowl and this will be part of tonight's dinner. Okay, 
So I removed the silver skin off the back and then I also went in along the rib bones. So if you haven't done this before, um, I love to go in there with a really sharp knife. I wouldn't be doing, I don't go along bones with a ceramic knife. Bones and ceramic knives are not a mix, do not do that. Uh, but I take my little metal knife and I just slide right along there and I just cut out the, the vein um, at the back of the silver skin and it just makes the ribs so much more tender. They fall apart easier and it's just less messy to eat. Okay, so there's my ribs. Now I got my wash my hands again. <laughs> you can see how much more effective it is to do all of your seasonings first in an assembly line and then only wash your hands five times. Okay, so we're going to go on to our Korean barbecue slash uh, barbecue ribs. So we have got here for our Korean barbecue ribs, we need ketchup. Hang on, let me grab ketchup. Rice vinegar. This is the one that I get from the Asian supermarket. If you don't have an Asian supermarket in your town, um, you know, all rice vinegars are delicious, but if you live in Kelowna, go into the Asian supermarket. It's down on the bottom shelf and it's like $2.99 for this giant bottle. Like how crazy is that? Um, okay, now I need a measuring cup. Because this is an actual recipe, I'm gonna measure. You know, I don't normally, but hey, why not? Um, so we're going to go in with a third of a cup of this. I really should take this little top off. This is annoying. Hang on. I have a small rice vinegar that I refill from my big one so that I can take it to cooking classes if, if the host didn't have any. So I'm just going to use this one because it's much easier. I don't want to be constantly taking that top off and getting my fingers in there. So I just take it off once or twice and fill the small bottle. Okay, so I've got my rice vinegar in there. I'm gonna get my package of Korean barbecue. Okay, so Korean barbecue in Canada, not in the USA. In USA, we are using the other package. So ribs, go. What do you use your stampede ribs for? Do you cook them in the oven? Do you cook them in the crock pot? Do you, you put them in a pressure cooker? I don't know, I only use my pressure cooker for lentils. I have no idea. So tell me, what kind of ribs do you use? Do you, how do you cook them? So I'm gonna dump that in. I should probably have mixed the sauce first. That would have made way more sense. I'm used to mixing things in a bag. So we're gonna to have to mush this a bit. Um, okay, soy sauce. I need a third extra cup of that. And again, I'm using this low sodium, that's not low sodium, it's wheat free. Because my son really reacts badly to wheat or chemicals or whatever that is that's happening. So we're going to use this one that is gluten free. And of course I have it, so I have it for uh, my cooking classes. Um, okay, probably on ketchup, hang on. Um. I totally forgot I needed ketchup because I almost never use ketchup. So I found a backup ketchup. I don't know where, I don't know where we keep it, but I found this one in the cupboard a couple days ago. So here we go. We're going in with our third of a cup of ketchup. Um, when I'm making this recipe for myself, I typically just use a tomato sauce or a tomato paste because I find it sweet enough without the, um, the ketchup, but my kids love it with the ketchup. So we're gonna get this done for them. Okay, so this is gonna get messy because I didn't think this through. Again, if you haven't already put your ribs in your bowl, put your sauce and stuff in first so you don't make a giant mess like I'm going to. So we're just gonna just get right on in there. Get this all mixed up good and everywhere, there we go. So this is a lot of saucy business, right? I can tell here that this is probably not enough ribs for the amount of sauce. Look at how much extra sauce I have. So, um, oh yeah, it says two racks of ribs. Ha <laughs> ha, that's because I only have one rack in here. Okay, so, but now it's all sauced and delicious and I still have another rack of ribs to clean. So I will clean my second rack of ribs and throw it right in that same bowl. with Korean barbecue oh yeah I wonder if I should just take part of that out oh I just don't even know what to do okay so that's ready that's gonna be cooked for dinner I'm gonna throw that um, on the barbecue low and slow like in the next five or ten minutes now I've got still I've got two containers 
Anybody want to suggest what I should put on these? I have got two containers of pork tenderloin. I have got uh, more chicken. Yes, I've got another container or two of chicken. Let's do some mix and match. Maybe a little sesame ginger action on some chicken. Okay, let me just fill my chicken containers. I've got that steak, so I'll put half of the steak in the sesame ginger, and then I'll probably put half of the steak in something else. All right. Now, Montreal chicken. I don't have any Montreal chicken here right now today, but that is that stuff's delicious. Oh, I want to do something else with Donair. What else will I do with Donair? Maybe we'll just throw I've never had it on my pork. So let's do Donair pork. Let's find out. Okay, so I'm gonna put my other half of a package of Donair on my pork. I will throw in some lemon. Balsamic vinaigrette, oh yes, so delicious. Ses Woo! Sesame, ginger, lime, soya, and peanut butter. Oh my word. Okay, I don't even know if I can handle that. I'm doing that right now. Uh, okay. Burger seasoning for the pork. Yes, if you've got the burger seasoning, that would be delicious. So I've just got lemon. I've got donair. I'm gonna little put a little bit of that. And you know what? I really love a little bit of salt. I like to put a little bit of that in lots of things because it's really yummy. All right, now I wanna dry my hands from the lemon. I've lost my cloth. Time for a new one. You know, the thing about cooking um, I use lemon with everything because everything needs acid, salt, fat, acid, heat, requirements in every food. Well, maybe not a dessert, but even better in a dessert. Okay, so salt, fat, acid, heat, you gotta have acid. It brings up the flavor in everything. I keep a whole bag of lemons and limes in my fridge at all time. Oh, and I didn't show you my freezer bags or my produce bags. Well, here's one of them. I got these in a set of 12, so there's like tiny ones to big ones. Um, so these keep my lemons and limes for so much longer than the bag they come in from Costco. So it really helps keep your products in amazing shape. My lemons would normally have been, or my limes would have been brown spots by now and they don't have brown spots because they have been in those freezer bags. Okay, so I wanna label this before I start to shake. Oh, Canada on pork with maple. Oh my God, you guys are killing me. Um, okay, so Donair pork. And I like to label, you know, I know that it's gonna be good if I take it out, but the reason I label it is because often I just make up crap as I'm going, right? I take random seasonings and I just dump them in containers and I write down what I did because when it's really good later, I wanna remember. I won't remember quantities, of course, but I'll at least know what combinations were extra delicious. Yeah, and I love those produce bags because they come in so many sizes. So I've got, you know, all sorts of different sizes going with my produce bags from little tiny ones to big ones. And I take, I've been taking all of my, like my chard and stuff out of the garden, chopping it up, putting it in a, pro a produce bag, and I can still cook it three, four days later. And it's not weird. It's fantastic. These are the best things ever. Okay, so, okay, Tracy, back, what, lemon? Okay, was this on my pork? You have to back me up. I can't remember what I was doing on my pork that you said I was going to do. Oh, I said I was gonna do that you suggested. Okay, and again, my lemons are going straight into my garbage, not my compost, because my worms don't like them. All right, I know you needed peanut butter. Okay, so here's the thing. This is the biggest thing, I think, that changes cooking. Everything you need should be at your fingertips. I've got 36 feet of cupboards. I don't have everything that far away. Um, I will link the, the brand for you, Cynthia. Um, I have everything I would use. So like check out these drawers. I don't know if you can see what's in them. I kind of have a few of these, uh, but everything that I would cook with 
is right here. I'm right-handed. It's at the right of the stove. So I can grab my tools instantly. My dishwasher, I designed my own kitchen. So of course it, it fits the way that I cook. But my dishwasher, of course, is right by your sink, but it's right behind me so I can drop things right into it. This is my cooktop right here. Everything that I'm gonna cook, I'm actually watching my whole living room as I cook um, and enjoying maybe often a little bit of a TV show. I'm cooking a little Netflix. Um, and then all my tools, all my knives are right here. My cutting boards are right here. So all of the things and all of my spices are here. So you probably can't see that. I kind of have a few but everything is right here at my fingertips. So it's not a big, you know, if I wanna cook something, I've got everything I need. All my things for baking are in a whole different section of the kitchen. So I go over there when I bake, um, and that way I'm not sort of stumbling out. Okay, sesame ginger, going in with the sesame ginger. Soy sauce. Soy sauce and lime is a classic combination. I will be doing on my last bit of steak, I'm gonna do soy sauce, lime, and Montreal steak. Best steak ever. Okay, so uh, lime. And of course, I don't wanna cut my counters because I didn't put an expensive counter because I'd rather spend my money in my yard. Okay, so there's some meat lime. And again, look at that, look at that. Is this not the best tool you've ever owned? Do you have this yet? Like, I need to see some love for all of you that have this. Woo! Because this is life changing. And of course, you're all gonna have all these lemons and lime now in your fridge, in your freezer bag, so you can add a little acid to every meal. Hello, nobody's, I need hearts for the thing. Okay, here we go. Oh, thank you. Oh, no laughter. I'm looking for hearts, people. Come on now. Thank you, just saying. Uh, this really is, yes, Andrea Peters, she got her first one, and what did you buy, like five more? Because it was so life-changing and you gave them to everybody? Thank you, people. All right, now, a little bit more lime going in there. So again, we're squeezing the essential oils out of the lime at the same time we're getting all the juice. Seven, she bought seven. Okay, see, people, best Christmas gift ever. Okay. Look at how much lime is coming out of there. And it tastes so much better than that little bottle of lime. Goodness me. And you get a giant bag of limes from Costco. But I don't think I cook, unless I'm making something like creamy, I don't think I cook without lemon or lime kind of ever. So, okay. Now this one, oh, we need to put some peanut butter, but I'm pretty sure my peanut butter is probably, it's a natural peanut butter. Ah, best peanut butter out there in my opinion. I could not use a peanut butter I love more than this. So um, I'm down to the bottom. So I don't know how much we need. And it's sort of thick and goopy. But I'm going to put that amount in. I'm going to shave this. Can't waste that. Okay. All right, peanut butter. I'm sure it's going to be good. I don't know if it's the amount that Tracy would put in. If you have suggestions, Tracy, tell me what I should, what I should mix up a bit here. Okay. Tracy O's pork. Oh, Tracy O-R's pork. All right, there we go. Give this a little whoopee ding. Get this mixed around a little bit. This is gonna be delicious. Tracy doesn't measure, I love Tracy. So those of you that need it to be measured, I'm very, very sorry. But you know what, I gave it a shot. You can do that exact fancy technique. And I'm sure it's gonna be good. Okay, so my, my uh, peanut butter is a little bit stuck. So I'm just gonna leave this one upside down and let the um, lime soften up the peanut butter and then it will be unstuck. Okay, what else do I need? I have got, I've got a tenderloin going in on its own. I've got to clean some more ribs. Mm, I've got a whole bunch of steak. So we're gonna do the lime. Let's get a lime. See, look at how many limes I'm going through. When, I, when you do your big shop, Cutting boards, again, as I said, I don't really need to move. Everything is at my fingertips despite having a massive kitchen. Because all the things I don't need are somewhere else, right? That's how uh, kitchen efficiency for me works. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with some more lime. I'm gonna do the steak, my favorite steak that I like to stir fry with green beans. So this was, 
just a riff off. Ooh, that line is super soggy and my knife is not liking it today. All right, so this, <laughs> this line is ridiculous. That is a ridiculous soggy line. Okay, so we're gonna go in with Montreal Steak, which is available in the US right now. Um, you can't get it in Canada, but hopefully you have one from the summer. So we're gonna go in with some lime. We're gonna go in with some soy sauce. So some lime, some soy sauce, and some Montreal steak is like steak of the gods. So then we stir fry that up um, with a little bit more sauce and lime, and lime, and then we combine it with green beans. Okay, Montreal steak, let's see. Oh, there it is, okay. So what I actually do is I have my seasonal in a different drawer. So everything that we no longer currently carry, or, except there's a random chicken broth in here. I do have other people in my home, so they don't know my method, but as a rule of thumb, that's how I usually operate the kitchen. All right, that's all I'm gonna do. I might add a, let me just, I'm gonna add a little bit more, a little bit more saltiness to that. And my steak's a pretty lean steak. So I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to keep it more protected as it's freezing and thawing. Well, and now I have to cut steak because I have nothing else ready. I gotta cut some steak as I talk to you. So I'm gonna cut half of the steak up. Now I don't need it to be exact because, you know, I'm not a chef and I'm not a restaurant. And if people don't like the size of their piece of steak, half no knees. And I'm going to just quickly pan sear it so it's all gonna cook the same. And the reason I'm really bad at cooking steak, I have not yet perfected my steak cooking technique to get it the right temperature on the grill. So I really like that I can do this. Now what this also allows me to do is you can see how I'm getting caught on this, this uh, flesh here. I'm gonna cut that out. That is tough as nails. I don't wanna be eating that. So the other benefit is this, is that when you're not buying the most expensive quality steaks, you can get that weird stuff cut out as you cook. So I'm gonna go around to the other side <clears throat> until I get back to that tough skin and then I will deal with it. Um, and then I will just have this in a frying pan for a couple of minutes with my green beans and we're ready to rock and roll. Thank you, Mark. What a sweetheart. Now, I haven't seen you guys when you've been out this way lately. Now this is getting too wide for me and I'm gonna make a mess or I'm gonna cut myself so I'm just gonna chop it down. And yeah, you know what? If you really think cooking needs to be precise, hopefully this shows you it really doesn't need to be. You can really just wing it and it's fine. Now, I would be trying to cut against the grain. This little piece I'm actually cutting with the grain just till I got that far, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute because that's how you get your meat tender. If you make these strips with the grain, you're not going to get tender, okay? So let's show you that, whoopsie. Let's give these to the puppers because they've just, I've just made their day. Okay, so this is the grain of the meat. So you can, and of course it's got that yucky thing. Hang on, let me just show you. This might be a better example. Okay, so you can see the grain of the meat going this way. If I cut my meat this way, I'm going to get long pieces that are going to be tougher. So I wanna cut my meat this way so that I get all these short little pieces of grain and that's how I'm going to get a better, more tender bite of meat. So it could simply be, if you get some steak that's tough one time and you've done strips, it could just simply be the way that you're cutting it isn't to the steak's best advantage. And of course, as I said, I'm just using sort of a cheap sirloin uh, because I'm chopping it up. I'm not gonna buy you know, a strip loin to chop it up like this. I'm gonna buy like this sirloin. So yeah, I think this was $20. I think my whole grocery shop was about 80. And that was the, two, the big pack of ribs, the tenderloin, it was actually on sale at Costco yesterday. So if you're going to Costco this afternoon, it will probably still be on sale, $5 a package. Um, that's gonna be about my, uh, my pound of meat. I could measure it, but I'm not really concerned. So I'm just gonna not, hang on. Yeah, so I had the, the double pack of ribs. I had the four pack of tenderloin. I had the family pack of chicken thighs. And I had something else. Oh, the steak. Yeah, okay, so that's what I had. So let's label this puppy. So I'm just gonna label this Evelyn's beans because I know what that means. Oh, awesome about the cutting part. Yay, I'm glad. 
I'm glad you had an epiphany. Okay, so Evelyn's beans pretty much is ready to go. Into my freezer. Okay, so the only thing I have left to do is to cut the rest of my steak, make another chicken. So if anybody wants to suggest a chicken, I'm gonna go throw a few more pieces of chicken in here. If you wanna suggest something that I should put on my chicken, we'll try something else. Okay, so the rest of my chicken isn't washed, so I'm going to do that first because I really like to wash my chicken. Um, I've grown my own chicken, so I really feel that washing your chicken is important. Of course, if you don't, don't worry about it, uh, but it's something that I really like to do. It makes me happy. Now this would be an ideal amount of chicken in that container. This would be nicely tightly packed. You're not gonna get as much freezer burn. I would have the ones on the bottom with the skin down, the ones on the top with the skin up, um, and then it's gonna be nice, but it's too much food for my family because it's just mostly two of us here at any given time now. So I will not be doing that many because I think that's, I don't know how many thighs in that, maybe six or eight, and that's more than I want to have at once. Um, I want to have food for the next day, but I don't want to have the same, I don't really necessarily want three days of the same chicken. So, now I've washed my hands. Oh my word. All right, what am I going to put in this one, folks? I've done, a, have I done a sesame chicken? No, I did a sesame, oh yeah, we did sesame with the pork. I mean, of course, I have an entire cupboard. I can use any seasoning on earth because I have lots of options. You know what? I have this sitting on my counter. Let's do this. Let's see what happens. Let's bake up something. Okay, so I'm gonna put some of this in. What am I gonna put in with it? Oh, hang on. This has got a lot of powdery business and it's, it's not coming out evenly for me. So I'm actually gonna use a spoon so that I can get a, uh, the powdery business from the bottom. So, I'll take about half the package and I'm gonna put it into two containers. I'm gonna put half of it in, I'm, mm -mm. how am I gonna do this? Okay, I'm now just dirty in an extra container, but I wanna put half in each. And one of my sons can't really do spicy and I can already feel the General Tao's got a little bit of a spice. General Tao. So I've got a little bit of a General Tao going up the nose right now. Whew. So keep that in mind. Oh my lordy lordy. Oh. All right. So I don't know what it even says. Probably ketchup and something. So general towel. Soy sauce and ketchup. No sound. Okay. General towel. Trying to pick. Let me. I'm trying to imagine the flavor. He was still too much powder. Um, okay. So I'm thinking. Since we want to have a little bit of lemon or lime, we want to have that hit of acid. Now, here's the thing. When you're doing the General Tao with Epicure's recipe, you're getting acid in your ketchup, right? So you're getting the acid hit. You just don't realize it. So I'm thinking maybe a little bit of lime. Maybe we'll do, hey, I'll do one lemon and one lime, and then I'll see which one I like better, right? Let's be creative. And here's the thing. We know it's not going to be bad. There's no way that could be the thing. And of course I have a lot of cutting boards. I could just keep opening the drawer <laughs> for a long time and removing cutting boards. I think I have like a two inch stack of cutting boards because when I'm cooking, I wanna be able to, you know, re easily just grab for the next one. Okay, so we're gonna put some lemon in one. Woo, that's a really big lemon and I didn't soften it up. So it's actually fighting back uh, because I forgot to roll my lemon. And it would have been, had more coming out the bottom than out, out the top if I had seen it. I basically broke, the, split the lemon because I didn't soften it up first. So we're going to experience the same thing probably on this half. All right. Oh, crap. <laughs> I can't do one lemon and one lime because look what just happened. See, cooking is not a science. And you certainly don't have to be a master to cook because, you know, look at me. So maybe I'll put a little bit of lemon in the second, or lime in the second one, because I really am wanting that now. And 
Yeah, anything else I want to put in there? I think this would be really good with some peanut butter too. So I think I'll put uh, some of Tracy's peanut butter in this lime one, the one that has more lime. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'll let you know, maybe I'll cook one of these tonight. So this one is lime. I need to make sure I label something because I will 100% forget as soon as I turn around and start washing dishes. I got lemon on my hands, hang on. <laughs> I can't get the lid off my pen, okay. So we have got lemon lime. Cow. And then I'm going to do some peanut butter in that one. And then I've got lemon. I've got lemon towel. Okay. So let's add a little bit more lemon to this one, add some peanut butter to that one. And of course, I won't need to add any oil to the ones that I'm adding peanut butter because peanut butter has it, its own inherent oils. So it's going to do the trick for that. Okay. So. I have used a lot of lemons and limes, but I also have, I'm, I don't know, 80 pounds of meat in my freezer now. So I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to that one. I'm just going to get a little, sometimes I just give a little taste. Mmm, mmm, oh, yum. Okay, that's going to be delicious. Okay, more peanut butter. This time I'm going to put my peanut butter in first because it's going to make it easier. But I've already licked my peanut butter spoons and I have to dirty another one. But the spoons are right there because you need them at your fingertips as you cook and empty your dishwasher. All right, peanut butter going down. If it wasn't noisy, I'd give this to the dogs. I'll give it to them after. That's called a bite lick and taste and it's not a good plan with good food roll result, just so you know. Um, okay, lemon, lime, cow, peanut butter, chicken. Let's give this a good mixer upper here. A whisk, oh, a whisk would be fantastic, yeah. Let's mix a thing to clean. Would be a very good plan. All right, it sort of might need a whisk. All right, all right, I'm going in, going in with my mini whisk. Add a little bit of water as well so I can get that peanut butter on all of the chicken. I'm totally cooking this one tonight with the peanut butter. It's gonna be delicious. My kids are coming for dinner so we're gonna end up cooking a whole bunch of different things I think because I want to try a bunch of them um, and then they'll go home with a lot of them. You know, one of the perks of coming to mom's for dinner is that you often go home with some food, especially when I do this and I don't have room for it all in my freezer because I still have food in my freezer from my last one. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to actually finish cleaning this chicken before I put it in because this is the chicken I'm going to eat and I want and I'm going to cook it tonight. So I'm actually going to clean that before it goes in the package. Um, I think, you know, we're officially done for anybody who came to check it out. I'm going to carry on if people want to ask questions or see how, see how I clean my chicken, you're welcome to stay. Um, and uh, then I will report back in my business page how everything was. Um, I'm going to look for, there we go, I'm going to just take some of my chicken seed. Look at all this extra skin, right? They leave all this crap on that we don't eat because this is the weight we pay for, right? So we're buying our chicken by weight, so of course that stuff's left behind. So I'm not going to give this to the dogs because it's just straight old fat and they really don't, I don't think they need that. If Andrea thinks they do, she'll let me know, but otherwise I'm just cutting it off and that will actually be discarded. Um, and then I've got my basically mostly clean. I'm taking sort of this really fatty, you know, the part, you know, the chicken where it doesn't get all crispy because there's all like that fatty goo. I want my chicken skin to be deliciously crispy without all that fatty goo. So that's how I'm going to clean up my chicken before I put it in the marinade. So I'm going to do that with all of these, give them a little bit of a clean. Yeah, get all this stuff off of here so that I get a lovely crisp skin that I enjoy fantastically and I don't have to do any sort of cleanup on my skin when I eat. Look at that, look how beauty that is. You're very welcome, Jackie, thanks for coming. 
Uh, if you did some cooking, I would love to hear you chime in. And of course, again, if you're uh, wherever you're watching from, if you're watching a replay, if you could shout out replay and where you're watching from so we can see how many of our consultants across and customers across North America joined us. You are very welcome, Isabel. Thank you for joining us. I'm cutting chicken and looking up at a camera. It's really not, uh, it's not the most conducive method. Uh, so now, like there's all this sort of goo in here, you know, chicken is really, it's really a not pleasant thing to probably watch somebody cleaning chicken, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, but I'm wanting to get all of this stuff, all of this stuff out that I don't want to eat later, I'm removing now. So this part of this chicken here is like super thick skin. I know that's not going to crisp up well, I'm going to remove it. Um, there's a little bit of crusty thing, there we go. So I'm going to have four pieces of this uh, chicken with the, oh, there's a big bone there. See now somebody, there's a loose piece of bone. I'm not going to cut bone with my knife because this is not a knife for cutting bone. Do not do that. But I was cutting off a chunk of bone that would basically have gotten into somebody's mouth when they took a big pint of piece of their chicken because it was a loose um, bone attached with some skin. Okay, so there we go. Getting the rest of my, oopsie, getting the rest of my chicken off here. I've got my four pieces. Now I took way too much of that skin off, so I'm not eating that piece. That'd be for one of the kids. Okay, so that's done. I've got my other four pieces of chicken to clean up to go into my uh, marinade that we did with the oil and the general town lemon. Uh, and then I will check in. I'm so glad you have your meals ready for the week, Karen. Oh, you can have meals ready for months with this. So I love it. Thank you all for joining me. Um, if anybody has any questions, if anybody's still here and you'd like to suggest what we should eat with our peanut butter, general tau, lemon lime chicken, uh, right? So this is gonna help your good food real results. This is just gonna help you have things in your freezer. You know, and I know there's a lot of great crock pot recipes out there, but I'm really not like a saucy kind of crock pot gal. Um, I'd rather have, you know, my chicken just cooked quickly on a frying pan or on a grill. And, and then I don't have to worry about sort of all that saucy extra calories, sort of sticky gooey stuff. Um, oopsie. Look what happens when you don't pay attention. You steal all your chicken skin. Um, anyway, it's another piece for somebody else I get. Yay, I'm so glad that you're gonna get yourself organized, Kath. Thank you so much for sharing that. Awesome. Yeah, you know what? Just do your big grocery shop once and load your freezer. And how much work, less work is it? Now again, I wanna walk you through doing it in an efficient manner, which is not at all how I've done it today. It is much more efficient. So I would take these and I would stack my, my counters all the way across with my containers, right? So my counter would be covered in a line of containers. And then I would take my lids and I would write the flavor. As I put the flavors, I would just walk around various seasonings and lemons and just make a bunch of concoctions. And I would label the lids at each place um, so I knew what was there. And then I would take all of my chicken in at once, wash my hands, all of my steak in at once. Right, so I would be doing that, so I wasn't doing all of this sort of random chopping, washing um, things, but of course that doesn't translate well in this sort of video, so I haven't done it that way today, but um, it really is about an hour that I do from start to finish, from the time that I bring those proteins in the door, start laying out my counters, um, grab all my different seasonings, and I'm off to the races. And of course it might take you longer than an hour the first time to do your, you know, four family packs of protein, um, but you'll get it down to a science and you'll be really fast with it and you'll find that you basically are prepped for about a month to two months worth of food in your freezer with uh, an hour's time put in. Thank you, Leslie. Oh, I'm, yes, I am very casual. I have a very casual approach to cooking. Uh, definitely nothing formal and fancy happening here. You know what, and here's the thing folks, I'm not a cook. I am a gardener, um, I like to eat, and I like my food to be ready in a giant hurry without a lot of work. So this is how I come I do this. I would spend, you know, I like my food to be yummy. I like it to be varied. I cannot eat the same thing over and over. It makes me crazy. Um, I'd rather eat chocolate, frankly, than eat the same thing on repeat. 
And so doing this allows me to have so many different flavors ready with my lack of sort of organization because I come in from the yard, especially like I don't even come in until it gets dark, right? I'm in the office and then I'm in the yard until it's dark. And I walk in and I've got food ready and it's always delicious and it's always healthy and it's always good for me and I'm not buying pre-marinated meats with all of those chemicals and stuff. You read the labels on those pre-marinated meats, what? That's nonsense, right? All we used was a little bit of soy sauce, some lemon, lime, and some seasonings. You don't need chemicals on your meats. So I'm gonna finish up now so I can get my ribs on the barbecue on low because I don't have them on yet and the kids are coming. And what time is it? Oh, it's only two o'clock. I got hours. Oh, easy peasy. Okay, so I'll get my ribs on the barbecue really low and slow and they'll have the most tender, delicious ribs when they get here. And I'll post photos tonight, so make sure to check back. Bye everyone.